Hey guys, do you know what happens to the human body after being exposed to high level of organophosphates? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video, so let's get started. Organophosphates are man-made substances produced by the process of esterification between phosphoric acid and alcohol. This chemical process is fairly complicated and frankly not really needed by EMTs and paramedics, so I'm literally just going to skip that part. These organophosphates can be found in many agricultural and in-home pesticides and insecticides, as well as military weapons and even some veterinary practices. Organophosphates can be absorbed cutaneously or through the skin, ingested, inhaled, or injected. Although most patients rapidly become symptomatic, the onset and severity of symptoms depend on the specific compound, amount, route of exposure, and rate of metabolic degradation. The primary mechanism of action for an organophosphate is inhibition of acetylcholine esterase, abbreviated ACHE. ACHE is an enzyme that degrades the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, ACH into choline and acetic acid. Acetylcholine is found in the central and peripheral nervous system, neuromuscular junctions, and the red blood cells, and is the chief neurotransmitter for the parasympathetic nervous system. So simply put, when there is an exposure to an organophosphate, there is no ability for the body to rid itself of the main enzyme that stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, creating a literal parasympathetic nervous system overload. Recall from this video right here that the parasympathetic nervous system is your feed or breed and or the rest and digest nervous system. Poisoning by organophosphates is typically sudden, starting during or just after exposure. Symptoms begin the fastest when the compounds are inhaled. The main set of symptoms that you need to be aware of are contained in the acronym SLUGEM. So let's jump onto the computer and figure out exactly what those symptoms are. All right, so there's a couple symptoms, signs and symptoms that we absolutely need to recognize for uh, organophosphate poisonings. And we can do that with sludgem. Now, most of the things that you're going to see is some sort of fluid loss, right? So I typically will say that sludgem is indications for leaking, okay? Leaking literally out of any orifice that you... Uh, that you have on the human body okay so this is all about remember that like fluid loss okay so s is going to be salivation okay that excessive drooling okay we're going to be losing saliva here your patient's going to be uh, drooling excessively okay the next one is lacrimation okay now a lot of people are like, lacrimation, what the hell is that, okay? This is just tearing, okay? So your patient is going to be crying excessively, right? Now, maybe it's not emotionally crying, but they're going to have tears coming out of their eyes, okay? U is going to be for urination. Can, that one's pretty self-explanatory there, okay? D, two words here, okay? Uh, defecation and the one that we really don't ever want is uh, the diarrhea okay just want to make sure I'm spelling those right so defecation diarrhea so it's coming out of um, you know the bowels here and remember all of these signs and symptoms are excessive right so this is excessive defecation excessive diarrhea okay now G is going to be for uh, GI distress, so gastrointestinal distress, okay? And typically we think of things like cramps in this, okay? We're going to have uh, some sort of uh, abdominal pain, okay, in here, okay? Now, next is E for emesis, okay, and that is vomiting, we remember we're just kind of going down uh down the list here remember i said all of these things are leaking some form of fluid out of an orifice okay so 
the real only one that doesn't leak fluid out of an orifice uh, is the G and the M, okay? Now, the M can stand for two things, okay? The first one is gonna be muscle. And when we're talking specifically about muscle, we're thinking spasms, okay? Uh, twitchings. Um, these are actions of the muscles that shouldn't be. So like muscle movements that are not normal, okay? You can put seizures into this as well. Now the other one that's gonna be M here is gonna be meiosis. So meiosis here is just a fancy word for small pupils, okay? So you're gonna have constricted pupils. Maybe they're not pinpoint, but they're going to be tiny, okay? And those are, that is sludge. Some other minor symptoms to be aware of are headache, dizziness, weakness, and nausea. Severe symptoms are seizures, bradycardia, difficulty breathing, and unconsciousness. Long after an exposure, people also can develop nervous system problems such as muscle weakness and numbness and tingling to the hands and feet, also known as neuropathy. Long-term exposure to organophosphates can also cause confusion, anxiety, loss of memory, loss of appetite, disorientation, depression, and personality changes. EMS should treat organophosphate poisonings with atropine. Atropine is an anticholinergic medication causing a blocking action of the enzyme acetylcholine. With the blocking of acetylcholine, the parasympathetic nervous system essentially is turned off, allowing the sympathetic nervous system to retake control of the body, thus causing a decrease in symptoms of the organophosphate poisoning. Well guys, that's it for today's video. Make sure to check out our brand new Patreon page to become a Medic Materials VIP provider and get exclusive access to tons of Patreon only content. Like, subscribe, comment, and check out these two videos right here for more awesome information. Stay safe out there, and I will see you guys in the next video.